We are gonna start off today's talk with a pop quiz. How much does a polar bear weigh? Just enough to break the ice. Hi, my name's Court Whalen, and today we're gonna to talk about polar bears and sea ice. So the initial question here is why do polar bears need sea ice? Why do we hear about it so much? What's this dependency about? Well, it's all about food. Polar bears need sea ice to feed. But first, let's rewind a couple million years. Uh, so the last ice age, a certain population of grizzly bears found themselves locked out on the ice. They were feeding, they were probably somewhere in Alaska or Northern Europe, and they found these little fatty nuggets of goodness known as seals. And they started eating these seals out in the sea ice. And they found that seals, being a marine mammal, need to pop their head out of seal breathing holes every once in a while. So if a bear could track seals out in the sea ice, watch as those seals pop their heads out of the seal breathing holes, they could basically wait at those holes, you know, on their little paws and wait to ambush them. And that's, that's exactly what happened. Now, uh, grizzly bears then turned into polar bears. I know. Bear with me here. So what happened is as these bears took the ice, found this amazing food source, they of course got really, really well fed, and they began to spend more of their time out in the sea ice. Through natural selection, they gradually got lighter and lighter fur. That fur helped them to blend in better. Um, we also see a few other things happening, like the emergence of carnassal teeth, and they actually look like kind of almost canine-like molars. They're still in the back of the mouth, but they're very, very sharp and they're built, they're designed for shredding, ripping, and tearing. You know, if you're gonna munch on a seal with big, thick skin and lots of blubber to go through, that's kind of what you want. And that's one of the other adaptations. Uh, another one, when you think about a polar bear, is that long, slender, tapered neck and head. A grizzly bear or a brown bear, you have pretty round, bulbous, almost like a proper neck with those big shoulders, big round face. Polar bears, not so much so, very conical. Uh, what do you think that's for? Well, it's an evolutionary adaptation to dive into those seal breathing holes and pull out the seals, kind of like a whack-a-mole game. So through all these adaptations, these bears likely began to evolve these traits that made them better at hunting seals out of the sea ice. And over a couple hundred thousand years, we see a complete morphology change from grizzlies to polar bears. Up until now, we're really talking about what's going on on the surface of the ice. But let's talk about what's underneath the ice, because this is a huge part of it. Now, polar bears are not found underneath the ice, but seals are. Why? Well, word of the day is apontic communities. Apontic communities, it's basically undersea ice life. Underneath the ice, you have the algae, you have the crustaceans, you have the little fish, the big fish, the walruses, the seals, et cetera, et cetera. So not only is the sea ice a really essential platform to hunt on or to use to hunt as a polar bear does, but it's also really important for the seals being able to feed themselves. It's actually what draws the seals in the area. So today we have the unfortunate situation that the sea ice is retreating because of global warming. Those bodies that do melt and reform on an, an annual cycle, we're noticing the ice breaks up earlier and earlier in the summer. It forms later and later in the year. And what this all translates to is a number of the polar bears that are found in the Arctic, of which there are probably 22,000 or so polar bears, they are coming to shore earlier and earlier in the summer. They are spending more and more time on land. And from everything you just learned, you can surmise why this is a bad thing. If polar bears on land, what are they eating? They're completely adapted to feed on seals. They are massive animals weighing between 1,000 and 1,600 pounds. They, their size is kind of their own worst enemy when we need to think about them switching food sources. Um, they no longer are used to feeding on salmon. They're no longer small enough to subsist on grasses and berries and moth caterpillars. They're too big. They need the weight. They need the size. They need the nutrition that really only seals can provide. So there's a big question, you know, as, as polar bears spend more and more time on land, what is gonna happen to them? They might be able to uh, ambush and surprise seals that are, that are basking on rocks, on shorelines. They'll absolutely go after it, but it's not reliable. There could be weeks and weeks between those feeding events. And essentially what that means is that there's a longer amount of time that polar bears are fasting. This is a very big concern. Now, bears as a group, as a family, they're very used to this boom and bust cycle. They're very used to eating a lot of food in a little amount of time and having a big part of the year not eating a whole lot. 
but we're getting very, very concerned that polar bears that used, you know, a couple hundred thousand, if not a couple million years of evolution under one scheme of having seals all year long, now shifting relatively quickly over the course of a couple hundred years, shifting to this ability to not get the food that they need for the metabolism to keep up. So that's the big question is, will they be able to adapt to life on land? In some cases, they're gonna have to. In some cases, they probably won't be able to. We probably will see over the course of the next couple decades, polar bears adapting in different ways. Um, for instance, those in the Southern Arctic might have more availability to bird eggs. Um, those in the Northern Arctic might have more time on sea ice and not be as beholden to find new calorie sources. So it's a huge question. Similarly, we do believe that there are certain areas known as the last ice areas on Earth where there could be sea ice well into the next 50 years. And most likely those polar bears that are there are going to be the most suited to long-term survivability. So we don't know what's gonna happen to polar bears in the long term. We have to spread more awareness. We have to each individually take more responsibility to learning and understanding what climate change is all about. And the main thing with climate change is that it adds so much variability. We just ultimately don't know how much variability it will be from the hottest hots to the coldest colds. And I'll tell you one thing that life doesn't really like a whole lot is rapid change and massive fluctuations. And that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing these changes in the ice. We're seeing these changes in temperature faster than ever before. But this really is where ever more research needs to be done to understand more about the last ice areas. We need to understand more about polar bear movements. What are they doing when they're on land in some of these remote areas? It's hard to study this stuff because you have to get really far remote areas. But nevertheless, this is a classic example of knowledge is power. And we absolutely need to have that knowledge if we're to save the future polar bear.